had no idea what do I have to do. I thought, dis I thought they were all mentally retarded, which is really pathetic because dyslexia has no connection whatsoever with intelligence. As the example of Thomas Edison shows, I mean, he's brilliant, but he doesn't process language uh, very well due to how his brain processes language. He processes lots of stuff very well, though. So dyslexics have, by their very definition, they have average to um, or better than that cognitive function. Can I, can I just clarify that? Is is there, on the other end, is there like a minimum IQ score where you would say? Oh, well, um, no. I, I, I would say, no. You can find amongst, uh, in people who have low cognitive ability, you will find an inability to process language and so on. There, um, and we generally refer to that more as developmental dyslexia. Um, they can benefit, low cognitive individuals can benefit from multi-sensory language instruction up to a point. But they're, because of their low cognitive ability, there's you know, a limit to how much critical thinking and so on can, they can, they are, they're capable of and higher level text and that sort of thing. But yes. Oh, finish. I'm sorry. Did you want to? I have another question. I may not be able to answer it right now. I may have to think about it. But I have two kids who are dyslexic, both who had Wilson, or I mean, we've definitely intervened. Yes. Yes. And I'm sitting here thinking, you're talking about like Edison, for example, how he stopped school in third grade. Clearly, he wasn't given any right. intervention. He went on to do all these things. Am I? Maybe by giving them all these interventions to get them to get through the day at school, squashing some of this other. No, no there's no connection. Like I know, no. Like I know, no. I know. I want them to read. I want them to get through school. Right. But maybe that's not who they were meant to. I, you know, I just I'm just sitting here thinking, wow, I've been intervening since first grade, and am I? And that's a really great. Am I thing. squashing? I mean, no. All this no. creative. All, all that's happening is that um, is that your children are learning sound symbol connections more and more efficiently, so that they become automatic, and so that they're capable of reading. It does nothing to change the strengths, you know, uh, that they have. Sally Shaywitz, who is a uh, one of the major researchers in dyslexia uh, and. Um, did a lot of the um, fMRI studies at Yale University. Um, she refers to dyslexia as um, one weakness in a sea of strengths. So it's you know often in fact oftentimes there are many uh, there are some there's some evidence that uh, individuals with dyslexia, because they rely so much on the, their right hemisphere, often have superior abilities that uh, in that in that in that that, that hemisphere uh, provides, like athletics, um, visual spatial ability. Uh, you, you know, um, there's an awful lot of <clears throat> yes, artists. Uh, artists, actors, athlete, athletes, um, plumbers, and uh, you know, and mechanics, and all these people who know how to do all and they they can they can visualize in three dimensions, you know, how or inhabit the the, the spirit of others as actors do, and change, and athletics, and so on, um, and that there may be actually some advantage <laughs> to having a dyslexic brain for a number of people. But, by, but that said, we definitely do not want to encourage in any way um, avoiding intervening because it's very important and the earlier the better. So, in fact, if you went to our gala, scholarship gala a few weeks ago, Henry Winkler came to speak to Fonz, um, and uh, <clears throat> he was just so moving. Here's a man who's had a brilliant career as an actor, and uh, but 
talks about the pain and the struggles of growing up, not being identified, trying everything he possibly could, constantly being told by his parents and teachers that he was dumb, and you know, the, it take, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unusual person who can really overcome that. And so by not intervening, you're risking a lot of, um, a lot of really bad outcomes for children. So, oh, no, I didn't mean yeah. I was going to get yeah. I just right. was wondering how right. much do you maybe squash point, but you're saying no. you don't. It doesn't, it doesn't you cross at all. No, 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 no not at all. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, anyway. <clears throat> no, that would be terrible. I mean, there are plenty of people who can also read who are brilliant and do great things, too. So, yes. It's a, uh, interesting point, though. Um, you know, another, another misconception is that dyslexic students are behavior problems. You know, here comes another teacher who, uh, you know, who thought, discussing a student thought, I thought dyslexic students were behavior problems. Um, the only reason that dyslexic students can become behavior problems is because of the extreme frustration <coughs> they feel by not having their needs met and not being able to learn because of the dyslexia. Their lack of progress, ineffective teachers can make students really angry. I used to, for uh, 12 years, I uh, taught and worked at Landmark College in Putney, Vermont, which is, Landmark is a small college that uh, is specifically for students with um, learning disabilities. I mean, it was founded for dyslexic students and students with learning disabilities, attention deficits, and so on. And I worked with some of the most wonderful students who were in their 20s by the time they got to us and hadn't learned to read and but you know who who had many many talents um and i you know i would hear stories uh from one student talked about sitting in a class in high school or junior or whatever and they do this round robin reading you know where everybody takes a turn so he would figure out which paragraph was going to be his that he was going to have to get and then he would frantically try to figure out what it said and as you know as the as the round robin came close to him and he realized he was not going to be able to do it very well and he didn't want to make a fool of himself and so he would chuck a spitball across the room very obviously get kicked out of the class and spend the rest of the day in in school suspension and he would rather do that than read than be embarrassed by reading. And that's the kind of, those, those, if, if you think about day after day after day having that kind of experience, it does horrible things to your sense, your self-esteem, your sense of um, accomplishment, and so on. And it's a wonder that we have people who get through that um, because it does result you know, students, uh, people with dyslexia have a much higher rate of suicide, of depression and anxiety, of underemployment, uh, you know, all, all kinds of things. And which is one reason why failure <coughs> to learn to read is now recognized by the National Institutes of Health as a public health problem, officially, because it is. Um, and it, it carries with it lots of outcomes. So again, what it is not is a problem of motivation, although constantly parents and teachers will say to these children, you have to try harder. <clears throat> you know, it's almost like saying, hey, I don't care that you can't see very far away. You're just going to have to look harder, you know. We would never think of saying that to a student with a vision problem. We would never think of saying to, um, t saying to someone with diabetes, hey, you don't need insulin. You know, just buck up and deal with it. And, that, and yet that's what we do over and over and over again to children with dyslexia, often. Um, so what do you think? This child is trying to spell GRS. 
Gears. Grass. Hmm? Grass. 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 Grease. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, the, this is the challenge of reading dyslexic uh, writing <laughs> when you're a teacher. It could be grass. I hadn't thought of that. I was thinking maybe it was dress because the, um, by the, somebody who mixes up sounds might very well hear the, the